What's up my friends, welcome back! So here I am with another review of a 3D printer. This is the Ender 3 from Creality and this is my new favorite 3D printer. And not because it's the best 3D printer there on the market, but because of the ratio between the price and quality. You see, till the Ender 3, the Annette A8 was my favorite printer. Because you could buy it for like 150 euros and you could get really decent prints with it. So I like the idea that any maker should afford a 3D printer. But the CR10 model was a little bit expensive, but now for only 160 euros you could get this printer, the Ender 3. This printer has the same build quality but also print quality as the CR10 but for a low price. But it's not just the price that I like about this printer, it's also the frame. As you can see it is very compact. We have the power supply here on the side and all the electronics are below the machine. So we have no loose cables and we don't need that ugly case on the side of the printer as in case of the CR10 model. The rest of the parts of this machine are exactly as the CR10. We have a metal frame, we have the lead screw, the NEMA 17 step motors, the Bowden extruder and so on. Also the power supply is a 24 volts power supply, so the heat bed will heat faster. I've made some tests with this printer with ABS, as you can see here with this Fox, with PLA, with flexible material and with nylon and all the prints end up great. So guys, let's make a proper review of this printer, so let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is the box that I received. So let's see what we have inside. Everything is well secured in place and I had no damaged parts. You have a list with all the parts below in the description. So now let's take a look at each component. So we have the manual with color photos that will help you to mount the printer which by the way it is very easy to mount. We have the main supply that looks really nice and with a plastic cover, some bags with screws, belts, SD card, plastic parts and some more small components. Then we have the main base with the heated bed, main electronic case and extruder block already assembled, some metal bars for the frame and more mechanical parts such as the z-axis carriage, motors and the spool holder. This here, what I have now on my table, it's all you get in the box. You will find some detailed photos with all the parts below. Now let's take a fast look at each. Don't worry, we will talk more about each part after we mount the printer. So this is the main base. We can see the heated bed here with a Biltec material on it and the Ender logo. Nice plastic corner for the heated bed wires, so they won't bend too much. I can see that they've also included big plastic knobs for leveling the bed and that's a plus. I really like that, makes leveling the bed easier. But there is no printing glass for the bed, so that's a minus one for that. Now on the bottom part of the frame we have the main electronics case and all the wires. I really like this configuration. They really took their time and studied the best option, so we won't need the external case on the side of the machine as in the Creality CR10 model. In this way the printer will fit in a much smaller place, because all the electronics are below. Ok, the rest of the parts are the same as in the Creality CR10 model. Nice V-shaped rollers for all the axes so we have a very smooth movement and less noise. Also NEMA 17 step motors, metal brackets and these huge squared metal bars for the bottom frame. Next, let's take a look at the power supply. Once again the placement of the power supply is on the side of the frame, but screwed onto the frame. So we have no external components, so the space this printer will need is exactly the printer size. The supply for this model is improved, and they went with a 24 volts one, and that's a huge improvement. That means that the heated bed will get heated much faster. Also, the wiring is closed in a plastic case, so the printer is quite safety to use, since no high voltage is exposed. It also has an on and off switch with included fuse for safety and a lipo plug to connect it to the main case below the machine. This is another great improvement, so a plus one for the supply. Next, well, we have some metal bars which are pretty basic, 
the LCD screen and the metal carriages. The LCD is nice and simple, with a rotary encoder knob to screw through the menu and get screwed on the front bottom part of the machine. This is the thing I most like for this printer. All the parts are well studied and improved, so the frame is very compact. So no loose cable, no external cases or separated LCD control, so a plus one for the frame of the Ender 3. Now guys, each carriage is made out of metal, so it's nice and strong, and once again with V-shaped rollers and a centric nut, so all the axes will have a very smooth movement. Each axis has the limit switch already installed and the Bowden extruder motor is also assembled. I can also see a small plastic case on top of the motor and pulley. Well guys, it's time to mount the printer and give it a test. Mounting was very easy and fast. The manual will give you all the steps and very clear. So this is it, the printer is all mounted. It is very beautiful and compact. Now plug the cable and start the machine. After calibrating the bed as always, I home all the axes of the printer one more time, insert the SD card with some examples, preheat and start printing, first with orange PLA material. Of course with PLA works great. This was a spiral print of the Hellboy head. The part is small but we can see great details on the face. Next, also with PLA but with grey color, I've printed this woman's statue and this turned out ok. Print quality could always be improved by changing the settings. These were just my first prints. This wouldn't be a good review without a banshee, so I've printed that as well and once again good results. You are almost not able to see the layers. This was printed with a 0.2mm layer height and end up a perfect print. Next, I've tested some flexible filament prints and achieved very good results. The short Bowden tube helps a lot compared with the CR10 tube. A shorter tube means less friction. Also, the heated bed reaches higher temperatures, so printing with ABS or nylon is also quite good. I've printed this white fox with white ABS and I can say that the results are pretty good. Also, this nylon print turned out good, so in general all the prints are ok. It's time to take a last look at the components inside of the case. All I had to do was to remove a few screws. Now guys, all I wanted to see was a big external MOSFET, but there wasn't one. The heat bed and nozzle heater MOSFETs are below these big heat dissipators on the main PCB. Also, each stepper driver has its own dissipator and the fan is placed above the board. Now the board is based on the Atmega 128 and a frequency of 16 MHz. Well, I kind of expected the external MOSFET for this printer, but anyway. So guys, do I recommend this printer? Well, I have to say that this is my new favorite printer. And as you'll know, till the Ender 3, the Anet A8 was my favorite one, due to the ratio between the price and quality. But now for only 160 euros, you have a printer with the quality of the Creality CR10 for both the prints and build quality. This printer will blow the market. Creality already has a good reputation and now they also have a low price printer in the same price range as the Tivo Tarantula or the Anet A8. But the quality is way better and it has all the improvements. I really recommend this printer for both beginners and for those who want to get a new printer. It has a metal strong frame and very very compact, so no loose cables or external cases. The supply is of 24 volts, so the bed gets hot quicker. Since the bed is getting hot quicker and also reaches around 110 degrees, it is better for ABS and nylon prints. That is a very good thing to have. In case of the CR10 the bed is huge, slower and can really reach over 85 degrees. All the axes of the Ender 3 have V rollers and they move very smooth. The electronics are below of the machine and inside of the metal case and the fan of this machine is not that loud. One thing I want to remark is the printing size of 22 by 22 cm, which it would be nice to be a little bit bigger and also I miss the glass plate. But for this price that is more than enough. 
If you're looking for bigger prints, well just go with the CR10 or other printers, which by the way, check my other video reviews below in the description and also the coupons with good prices for the Ender 3 printer. Due to the printing size, the Bowden extruder tube of the Ender 3 is shorter, so printing with flexible filament gets easier. All high voltage cables are inside of the printer so it's safer to work with. Print quality is good, big LCD screen and nice control, easy to assemble and amazing price. As I said before, this is my new number one, I've made some really good prints with it. So for those who are asking which is the best printer to buy right now, well of course it is all about how much you want to spend. But for low price printers I can say that this would be the best choice and that's my opinion. So guys, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this review, I've tried to give all my sincere thoughts. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other videos. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.